Um, I know that you like comic books. And I don't like comic books. I love <laughs> right. comic books. Um, you can, I would imagine, I would imagine you can walk the floor right now and not have and not have too much drama. Dude, I think this may be the best time in my whole career. You know, I'm here enjoying Comic Con. I've got two movies to promote. But I just walked around for 45 minutes and took like two pictures, you know? And it's like, that's the most beautiful part of it. The creative process is the part that I love and enjoy. And yes, I want like the fans to love it, but I'd rather they love me from a distance, you know? So, and I want to, be, I'm a fan, so I want to be out there with the fans. I, we were just out there, you know, meeting people. I had some Fandango uh, theater gift tickets and I gave like, gave them out to the best dressed people. One of them got $500 uh, Fandango ticket that was real nice and it's just nice to go out there and mingle and you know this is a this is a beautiful time it's really a beautiful time so um you know I love my work um but I also love my anonymity and right now I have both of them in 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 a really great in a really great place yeah that's not going to be the same next summer I'm going to give you a little update you're probably fucked yeah <laughs> <laughs> you might be right you know but I'm just going to enjoy this comic con and um you know, and just love this this feeling of enthusiasm, and, uh, and just I feel like one of the I am one of the fans, man. You yeah. Know, well, if, the, if I wasn't in the movie, I'd be excited, uh, as excited about the movies as I am now. Anyway, you know. Uh, I was there one like thing that you geeked out over or bought on the floor? Um, I haven't had a chance to buy stuff, but I did just get a Power Rangers bag for my son, and uh, with like Power Rangers tattoos and all of that, and I did just take a photo with a full size Red Ranger. And I'm a little bit overexcited about that. Oh, let's jump into why I get to talk to you today. Uh, you have two movies coming out. You have Transporter coming out, I believe, in September. That's correct. And then you have Deadpool in, I forget the release date, January, February? February. You knew it. Yeah, I just I couldn't remember the exact date. J let's jump into Transporter first. Uh, the trailer is loaded with action. Uh, some preposterous stunts. Yeah. Uh, what, <laughs> what the F was it like filming that thing? <laughs> It was preposterous and fun. It was exactly that. I mean, the trailer shows, you know, how uh, high octane and, and action filled and, and, and fun it is. You know, it's not Shakespeare. It's great bloody fun. You know, and we had great fun doing it. And you know, hopefully that that, that fun that we had doing it will, will translate on, on on screen. You know, uh, I'm assuming that this is a movie that you do not have to have seen the other Transporters, or you do. Um, I don't think you necessarily have to have seen them. No, the the, the storyline doesn't doesn't follow on. I mean, it's very much in the same vein as Bond. You know, where where they kind of start afresh. They have the same variables of the the, the beautiful suit, the beautiful girls, the fast car, the action, and and so we've got those variables for the fans of the the, the, the franchise. But we've we've taken it in 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 in, uh, in our direction. You know, the the, the director and myself, we we we've taken it where um, where we felt felt was right. Was there a day on set that you just shook your head and said, I cannot believe we're doing this? The day I was wearing my Christian Dior suit and leather shoes on a jet ski, jumping waves, chasing after a speedboat with a scorpion arm with a half a million dollar camera, um, going ridiculously close to the boat, almost hitting it, and jumping waves. Um, I was just like, I can't believe this is this is my job, you know. And then there was another day that they put a camera on so they could have the POV, and they just said, go out there and tear it up. For how long? Twenty minutes, you know. Just just go out there and have some fun. Head for that island. It was like, okay, and just get out there quickly before anyone tells me otherwise. It was like, it was so fun. It really was. Yeah, I can't even imagine. Yeah, can't even imagine. Yeah. Um, what was there? Is there one? action set piece that you are really looking forward for people to see or is it pretty much like it's just it's just action do you in, know what I mean in the movie in yeah. the transporter no I don't know if there's one specific thing that I'm looking forward to people seeing there, I mean there is a cool scene with a car that I'm kind of looking forward to people seeing with a moving car I'll keep it cryptic like that but um, yeah that, 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 that you see a glimpse of that in the trailer I believe in the second trailer so yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to people seeing that. Uh, I, one of the things I, I liked was in the second trailer when the car is doing the 360 and hits the fire hydrant, yeah, and a little bit, and that knocks off with the yeah. water. That, I do that all the time, just on the way to the supermarket. Oh, man. it's usually how I park. I I, I don't blame you at all. Um, uh, that's the way I like to roll too. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> Clearly, um, I'm going to play a game with you that uh, I've been playing with a lot of people. It's called Save or Kill. Um, 
Uh, yeah, here we go. It, it's like a personality <laughs> test. One of these things you can save. One of these is erased from existence forever. What do you save? It's wow. like geeky stuff. Okay. Um, Star Wars or Star Trek? I'm going to save Star Wars, dude. I'm going to save Star Wars. A lot of people do. Yeah. You're, you're, not, you're not alone when I yeah. went on that one. Uh, Game of Thrones or Breaking Bad? That's like egg and bacon, dude. Of course. That's like uh, peanut butter and jelly. Did I not say these were hard questions? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I played this. I made Del Toro play this earlier, too. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'll let you have a few passes. Yeah, I'm going to pass that. Okay. Do you love them both? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to pass that. Uh, the Wire or Mad Men? The Wire. I love the I'm saving The Wire. Yeah, exactly. I love The Wire. Uh, NSYNC or Backstreet Boys? Um, exterminate both. Uh, Zelda or Mario? I'm gonna edge. I'm gonna save Mario because he he survived so many consoles. You know, it's like two artists. One had ten albums. One had two. I have to go with Mario because Zelda was so great on the Game Boy. But I never really played him outside of that. And Mario's still going strong. I see a couple of them today. I saw Wario. Today, yeah, no, um, the, Mario has survived. Yeah, Zelda yeah. less than frequent. Uh, yeah. Han Solo or Indiana Jones? <laughs> I love this game, man. This is a great game. I may need ten minutes to think about this one. Though. Han Solo or Indiana Jones? You know, what? I'm going to save Indiana. Sure, I'm saving Indiana. Yeah, I'm even with the fourth it. movie, I'm saving Indiana. There we go. Maybe change my mind. <laughs> Beatles or Rolling Stones? I'm saving the Beatles. Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings? I'm saving Lord of the Rings. No, no debate. Uh, you know, I'm so embarrassed to say I've never seen Harry Potter. Uh, the books are quite good, uh -huh. and the movies are quite good. But yeah. the Lord... Anyway. Yeah. Uh, uh, Iron Man or Captain America? Difficult one. The obvious choice would be to save Iron Man, because Danny Jr. has been killing it. But Captain America too. It was so good. And I'm, I really, really love the way that um, Evans has done Captain America. He's really added a lot to that character. Yes, huh? And, but, but this is really the Civil War question. Who do you side with? Oh, man. <laughs> Why are you making me do this? It, it, it's not like there's a camera going. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Man or Captain America? Again, it's a personality test. You know which one, but both... Listen, I see... I'm saving Iron Man just because you just said personality test... And just like Deadpool, Iron Man is so irreverent and fun and unpredictable. His one-liners. I'm, I'm saving Iron Man. Iron Man. This is the big one for you. Specific for you. Twilight or Fifty Shades of Grey? I've never seen either. You've made the right answer. Uh, this is a brutal one, and it gets everyone. Scorsese or Spielberg? I'm saving Scorsese. Oh, so no, no even debate. I'm, I, I'm a huge fan of both. Um, but I'm a bigger fan of Scorsese. I mean, that's difficult. Band of Brothers is maybe my favorite TV series of all time. Um, and the more you look in, you know, the more you check um, Spielberg's back catalog, it's phenomenal. So the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm edging back towards Spielberg. But I'm just going to go with my instincts and say Scorsese. He directed Goodfellas. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Uh, the D pen scene at the bar, you know, is one of my favorites. Uh, I already know the answer on this one. Uh, DC or Marvel? Exactly. Uh, Back to the Future or Ghostbusters? Ghostbusters. But I do love Back to the Future, but Ghostbusters all the way, man. Uh, Sopranos or Walking Dead? Sopranos all the way. Sopranos... It's either Band of Brothers or Sopranos for me, probably for series. So um, definitely Sopranos. Uh, South Park or Family Guy? I'm going to go with South Park, even though I'm a huge fan of Family Guy, but I, I love what, what South Park have done. Um, Alfred or Yoda? <laughs> That's such a wonderful combination, man. It, because they're exactly they're the same. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, do you like Luke or Batman? I think I have to save Yoda, man. I have to save Yoda. I have to. Yeah, I, I don't know if you're wrong. In fact, you're probably not. Uh, Michael Jackson or Prince? I'm saving Jacko. Regardless. <laughs> Batman or Superman? Which Batman? Which Superman? Uh, I think it's just in general the character. One of them's gone, one of them's saved. I'm saving Batman. Because of the Dark Knight, 
Because of what they did with all of that, I'm saving Batman. Uh, last saver kill question. Andre the Giant or Rowdy Roddy Piper? Is that who that guy was dressed up as earlier on? Andre the Giant? Yes. The I saw that, that I the, saw that guy downstairs. Yes, he's, he was the one I gave the $500 ticket to. And we were now full circle. Yeah, we're all coming around. So, so what was it, Andre the Giant or... Or Rowdy Roddy Piper. How dare you. Right, I know. I mean, my favourite was Big Boss Man. And when I grow up, I want to be Legion of Doom. Both of them in the gold, in the gold ones on the Harley Davidson bikes. But I think it's got to be Andre. Yeah, although without Roddy Roddy Piper, there's no they live. This, this is, is the, the hardest choices. thing I've done all day, man. I, I appreciate that. This is tough because this... this These are real mean, questions. It, it means something to me. I know you're a geek. I'm going with Andre. I'm saving Andre. I, it I, hurts. I understand. Let's jump into uh, something that I'm so fucking looking forward to, which is Deadpool. Uh, what can you tease people about what it was like to make that movie? It was a dream come true. It was, it was, uh, it was amazing, you know. Every time I looked at Ryan in the Deadpool mask, it was just like, we're really doing this. We're actually making the Deadpool movie, and I'm in the Deadpool movie. I'm going to fight Deadpool. I'm going to kick Deadpool's ass, and um, I'm going to do some really horrible things to Deadpool. And um, and it was just, it was just incredible, you know. And, and and Ryan was just phenomenal in it. Ryan is gonna, the world is gonna love his portrayal of of, of Deadpool, the geeks, but also I think. Um, you know, mainstream culture as well. One of the things that I'm incredibly excited about is the fact that it's rated R, it's going to break the fourth wall, it's going to do things that no superhero movie is currently doing. Was that one of the things when you read the script that you just immediately, you know, resonated with you? 100%, uh, as it should. You know, if we're making a Deadpool movie, he's got to break the fourth wall. He's got to surprise you. You know, Deadpool's that guy that in the middle of a huge battle, he just goes, oh, I'm bored of this, and blows his brains out in the comics, you know. And that's why he's so wonderful. No other comic book character would do something like that and be so off the cuff, and we did that. And when you read the script, I remember the first time I read the script, I got the offer for the part without reading the script. And so they said, um, so we said, you know, we can't accept it without reading the script. And they said, we can't send it to you, but you can um, you can go to the casting director in London and, and read it. So I went there, I signed a confidentiality agreement, I sat down there and I started reading it on the red paper, which you can't photocopy. And I was just laughing out loud the whole time. It was from the first page to the last, it was the funniest script I've ever read. And um, just so out there, I couldn't believe how far they were pushing it and how far we pushed it, you know, and even, you know, Tim Miller, who's such a gentleman and um, such a, a guy with such a clear vision and, um, you know, uh, such a leader, he, he was, he, he pushed it even further, you know, all the time it was, no, let's not be those other superhero movies, let's be Deadpool, you know, let's stay faithful to it and it was all about keeping it true to the, the, the comics, you know, because we're fans and because we're geeks, and if, you know, if anyone in the cast that wasn't a geek, I would give them the Daniel Way uh, graphic novel collection and say, read this. This is a must, you know. And that's my favourite Deadpool um, collection as well. And um, you know, because we were geeks, we were always going to stay true to it. You know, it wasn't so much that the fans were in our thoughts while we were making it. We were fans. It was fans making it. You know, we understand it completely. And Ryan is so sympathetic with with the character. And um, you know, it was so important for us to represent Deadpool as he is in the comics. What uh, what footage have you seen from the movie? Nothing. Well, I mean, actually, you know, I saw some bits in, in, in Tim's hotel room and in the, in the makeshift edit suite, and I saw some tiny bits. When I shoot, I don't like to look at the monitors. You know, I don't like it to be a film in my head. I like it to be um, real life, you know. And um, But every now and then I'd look and I'd go, oh, my God. Oh my, I'm, you know, I remember this one part where Ryan is, uh, how can I say this without, Ryan's in an uncompromised position, I can say loosely, and um, you know, the the work that Ken, the DOP did, and, 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 and Tim did, and, and you know, the emotional work that Ryan did, you know, he's not just a comedic actor, he, he can do the emotions, it was just like, you know, I really felt like we were almost watching, like, you know, dare I say it, 
Blade Runner. You know, it felt like that. It was that element. And, you know, there was a lot of the... Blade Runner was a, a constant reference for Tim Miller from the beginning. You know, he said that he wanted it to feel dark like that. He wanted it to be this this, this, this um, off-center modern world. And, you know, Ajax was very much influenced by Rutger Hauer's portrayal of Roy Batty. You know, that was really strong in my mind as well. There were photos all on my wall at home along with loads of serial killers and Joseph Goebbels and, you know, uh, Javier Bardem in No Country for Old Men and all of this. And so it was like, Blade Runner was a, a, a big influence for us. And yeah, I really feel like we've made like the first postmodern um, Hollywood superhero movie, you know, and that's exciting. I was going to say, I, I realize I've done a disservice to everyone watching. There are going to be people who don't know the character, who don't know it's, you know what I mean? So let's talk a little bit about who the character is uh, for people that aren't familiar with the comic. Mm -hmm. uh, Ajax? Yeah. So Ajax went through the Weapon X program himself. He's an ex-Special uh, Forces or ex-soldier who went through Weapon X and was given the superpowers of, he had all of his nerve endings removed so he can no longer feel anything, specifically pain. But what was interesting is how that would affect uh, the mentality of somebody, you know. Obviously the obvious thing is the physicality of it, going into a fight, not worrying about getting hurt, you know, can you imagine that? And um, and then, you know, the, the psychological side of it, you know, the, the things that he would be lacking in, you know, empathy, uh, social responsibility, all of these things, and it makes, rather than make it into some dark psycho, it actually just makes him light and funny because nothing matters everything is light everything is funny and that was that was great fun you know that was really uh, that he, he was great to play you know and he's basically he uh, so after I've been through the Weapon X program I run the, 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 the workshop and in the workshop we take ex-soldiers and we turn them into superheroes or so they think and we took um, this ex-soldier who was terminally ill, named Wade Wilson. We experimented on him and injected him with a serum that activates mutant genes lurking in his body, and we gave him superpowers, you know? This is the thing that I think Ajax couldn't understand is, why would Wade not just thank him? He should be hugging him and buying him roses and shining apples for him, you know? He made him a superhero. But Wade, being Wade, um, you know, was, was a, there, there was some conflict, let's say he was very disrespectful and um, there was some conflict and uh, there was a, a strong uh, friction between the two. And that's basically the, the story of the movie is the, the revenge of, of, of Wade Wilson trying to get back at um, Francis or Ajax. And, you know, that's, that's the story for the fans of, for the people who don't know the comic book. For the people who do know the comic book, Let's say this is Ajax or in his early stage. So this is more Francis. This is more the attending or the attendant, as he's known. When he's in the workshop, you know, when uh, Ajax comes back five years later in the, in the, in the um, comics, he has the big suit and all of the stuff that flies out and the red eyes and all of that. That's not this movie. This is before that. So, um, so, so, yeah, this is the early, the early Ajax. Uh, I also want to touch on uh, Kill Your Friends, yeah. which is a project that I'm actually looking forward to. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about who you play, what the film is about, and getting to work with that cast. It was it was a dream come true because Kill Your Friends was my favorite book, my favorite novel, rather. It was just incredible. Um, and I read it about four years before, and I remember I was working on a movie called Tiger House in South Africa, and I got an email through that said, Kill Your Friends at the top of it. And the only other moment I've had that feeling was when I got an email that said Deadpool and I to kill your friends and so I read it and I was looking at it and I auditioned for another character that I couldn't play because of uh, time differences I came back too late from Tiger House so they made a character uh, called Danny Rent who was a uh, what they call a two bob manager which is a um, I don't know how you'd um, in America, you know, he's a half-assed manager, basically. Um, he's trying his best, but he's managing a, a, a girl group, which is pretty awful, and, and, and trying to make the best of it. And, um, and they made him into a bigger character. And I wear a ridiculous amount of gold jewellery, 
and uh, gold chains and Rolex watches and ridiculous diamond rings with music notes on them. And uh, Please tell me you went in public with that. What's that? Please tell me you went to like a Starbucks with all that stuff just to see what it would be like. <laughs> and do you know what? The, the, I, I borrowed all of these clothes off my friend and um, when I see him out, he's still, he's got the, sometimes he's wearing the rings and stuff. He's the greatest. And all of the shirts were like these old Machino um, and Iceberg shirts from the 90s with like bright colours. I mean, we took it there. We took it all the way to the 90s and um, I'm really excited for people to see that. I'm so glad that you, that you mentioned it, you know. It was a independent movie I think it may have been two million something like that you know we made it very cheap and um, you know it's 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 uh, he's an anti-hero um, Stell Fox the lead character played by Nicholas Holt a, a great man and a great actor um, and and he's an anti-hero and he's someone you just get behind and you want him to do all of this horrible stuff and um, I hope I hope that that people love the movie and I really hope people go and read the book as well because it's just so fantastic. It is interesting that you ended up in the X-Men universe and Nick is also in the X-Men universe. Yeah, I mean, there's a line um, in, in Deadpool um, where we talk about Beast, not very nicely. And um, I was just laughing thinking of Nick, you know, and um, it's, it's great, it's great, man. I mean, I, I can't wait to work with Nick again. As I say, he's such a, he's a, a real gentleman and a, a kind-hearted titan of an actor and he did so great in Mad Max I was just going to say to you he's yeah. fucking great in Mad Max phenomenal in Mad Max what a lovely day you know he was he was so so great in it but um thank you George Miller yeah yeah he, he's he's phenomenal man I'm looking forward to working with him again in the future you know and seeing him I, I believe I'm going to see him at Comic Con and uh it'll be lovely to see him I was going to say uh this is going to air after Comic Con uh, so I can just say that, you know, the cast of X-Men, Deadpool, it's just a, a superhero extravaganza on yeah. the Fox stage. Yeah. You know? It's going to be nuts, man. I mean, this is, like I say, this is my first Comic-Con. And what a wonderful way to do it, you know, to be here promoting the two movies. I'm working like a dog these these two days, but it doesn't feel like work because I'm speaking to people who are passionate. So much of the time you speak to journalists who are, you know, reticent or you feel like they haven't done their homework or they're just kind of, you know looking at their phone behind the camera and stuff. And you guys are so engaged, so knowledgeable. You, you know this world. You're, you're fans like me. You're geeks, nerds like me. So it's like, you know, when people say, all right, that's it, we're finished. I'm like, no, you know, let's talk more. We have more to talk about. So um, yeah, that, but, this no, is let's, a joy, let, man. Let's be honest. There's also some good parties down here. So let's not do too much press. Yeah, but I'm, you I'm know making what? a joke, joke, joke. For me, genuinely, like, I, I'm like... I have like one glass of wine or one one drink at the end of the day, and I'm 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 home, man. I'm going home and I'm chilling. Like for me, this is the work. I'm not here to party, and you know I'm not that party guy. And when I do party, I don't I don't party at um I like, in public, you know. Sure, I like both though. You work all day, and then when you're at Comic Con, there's some. Uh, it's just it's really cool because it's just loaded with fans yeah. who are just trying to have fun. And you know what? I I can't comment on the parties until I've been to one. Sure. Right. You'll have some fun tonight or tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm going to, my last thing for you. Uh, what's coming up next? Do you have, have you... We're working on it. We're saying no to a lot of things at the moment. You know, um, a good friend of mine and my team once said to me that no is the most powerful word that I can have. And um, I am enjoying going with my gut and my instinct and making sure that the next project is the right project. And um, how do you follow a project like Deadpool? You know, how do you take some half-assed project with a with a, a mediocre script and, and all of that? You know, you can't follow on from that with, with with something mediocre. So, I'm enjoying being back in normal life. I've done a lot of movies back to back. I've been working really hard, so it's just such a joy for me to um, spend time with my family and 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 live real life. You know, I totally respect that. Uh, let me hit stop, but thank you so much for giving me your time. Thank you, sir.